Okay, so in today's session, I am going to be answering another question. I'm answering a question on, um, of course, quantitative techniques. This is the question that we are answering. It's about a probability tree diagram right there. That's part A of the question. Then we have part B of that question that we will be answering. It is also about probability. And then we also have another question here about rank correlation coefficient. So those are the three quest, um, questions we are going to answer and that will be the end of the video. So let's get to it. So here we go. All right. In a certain farm dealing in toxic waste disposal, when an employee arrives late for duty, there is one in four chances that he or she will be caught by the supervising manager. On the first occasion, an employee is caught late. He or she is given a warning and dismissed on the second occasion. Okay, so here we have a scenario here. Someone, um, yeah, the, the, the someone when someone comes late for two times in a row and they are caught, then they will be dismissed. So they are asking us to use a probability tree decision or probability decision tree. Yeah. Using a probability decision tree, find the probability that an employee who is led three times is not dismissed. So this is more like a conditional probability. We want the probability that someone arrives late three times and is not dismissed. Okay, that's what the question says. Now take note that uh, if someone comes late three times and is not dismissed, it simply means that uh, they've not been caught. Because let's look at the question. The question says that in a certain farm dealing in toxic waste disposal, when an employee arrives late for duty, there is one out of four chances that he or she will be caught. What does that mean? It means that there is you, when you arrive late, you could be caught, and there is a possibility of not being caught. But then it continues to say that, of course, he's caught by the supervising manager. But then it goes on to say that on the first occasion an employee is caught late, he or she is given a warning and dismissed on the second occasion. So in other words, the dismissal only happens if you're caught. What does that mean? It means that you can come late as many times as possible. As long as you are not caught, you will not be dismissed. But if as you are coming late, if they get you two times, you will be dismissed. Now, the question wants us to use a probability decision tree to find the probability that an employee who is led three times is not dismissed. So, in other words, for somebody that is led three times and they are not dismissed, it simply means that they have not been caught or they've, they've, they've not been caught. It's either possible that uh, when they, they come late, they, they are not been, they've been coming late three times and they've not been caught the entire three times they came late. That is how it is possible for someone to come late three times that is not dismissed. If they come late three times, they are not caught. That is the possibility. Or they came late three times and out of the three times they came late, they were only caught once. Because when you caught once, uh, that you just given a warning late according to the question. Yeah. So either you came late three times and you're not, you are not caught or... You came late three times and they only caught you once. Because the moment they go get you two times, you're dismissed. So our job is to find the probability that an employee who is late three times is not dismissed. So that's what you're going to get st st start doing using a probability tree. So um, let's look at, let's get started here. So we are going to look at it like that. We are going to look at something to do with arriving late. Okay. Someone is arriving late. Okay, now when they arrive, arrive late, they are either, now this is the first time, okay, when they arrive late, they are either going to be caught, let me just use this, either you're going to be caught, that is denoted by C, you can use whatever letters you, you feel you will be easily interpret, so either they will be caught or they will be not caught, let me use N, so when you arrive late, either they will catch you or they will not catch you. Now, if you're caught, according to our question, 
uh, uh, they're telling us that uh, in a certain farm dealing in toxic blah 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 when an employee arrives late for duty there is one in four chances that he will be caught so it means in order for you to have been caught it is one out of four chances that's the probability of being caught so that means that if the probability of being caught is one out of four chances it means the probability of not being caught is what is one minus a quarter it is three quarters so it means it is three out of four because uh, the probability of something happening and the probability of that something not happening should always give us one it's one of the rules of probability yeah that the probability of something occurring plus the probability of that thing not occurring should be equal to one yeah probability of falling sick plus probability of being healthy should be equal to one probability of jumping and probability of not jumping should be equal to one i think you get what i mean it's one of those probability rules foundation so here probability of getting caught probability of not getting caught when you add these two they should give us should be equal to one okay so now this first branch of the tree is showing us um the first uh, let, let me call it the this is the first um you know arriving late the first time okay you're going to arrive late the first time these are the possibilities that when you arrive late the first time you can either be caught or you can not be caught that's the possibility so now let's extend it um the second time so that's the first time so let's look at the second time so the second time again you've come late okay again this is the first time now the second time if the first time you came you came and you are caught the second time you can come late and either still you can either still be caught or you're not caught same thing here the first time you came late and you are not caught so the second time you can come late and either you are caught or you are not caught and in both cases we said remember now the, the uh still we say that for you to be caught it's going to be one out of four times that you're not caught that's what the question says here that when an employee arrives late for duty there is one out of four chances that he or she will be caught so it's a quarter so the probability of not being caught is three quarters again these two these two when you add them you add them should give you one same thing here the probability of being caught is a quarter the probability of not being caught is three quarters this is the second time okay this is the second time the second time this whole this whole thing these are the possibilities in the second time now they're telling us three times so that's we are going to extend this one more time to for the third time okay so again the third time out of these possibilities you can either be let me extend them here i think the space was not so much but still there are also still two possibilities okay so either you can still be caught or you're not caught you can either be caught or you're not caught caught or you're not caught caught or you're not caught okay and if you're caught it is one out of four chances not caught three quarters if your coat is one out of four chances here it is three out of four if your coat is one out of four chances here it is three over four here if your coat it is one out of four chances here it is three out of four like that so now these are the branches that we have come up with now let's not confuse this with when we are using probability trees when we are picking certain things from it a, 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 a box maybe we are picking beads from a box the interpretation here will be different but i think that will be a video for another day when we are specifically talking about probability trees so now let's identify remember these are three times there's the first time this is the second time and now this was the third time right here okay third time this is the third time so now we are going to identify which ones in which 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 which, which route or let, let me use that which route 
uh, qualifies for one that is not caught. Okay, so let's get started. Remember, we are finding the probability that an employee who is late three times is not dismissed. So in order for you to be late and you are not dismissed, it means that you came late three times and they failed to get you on two times. Because remember, you will be dismissed if they catch you twice. So it means if you are able to be late three times and they don't catch you, that means that they, the manager was not able to catch you, the supervising manager was not able to catch you for at least two times. So where is that possibility? That possibility, let's get started with this one. Uh -huh. So the first time you come, you're caught. Okay. The second time, you're caught. So it means that as long as this, as far as this branch is concerned, you're dismissed. Okay. The, so this one can't work. So let's get again to the next one. You come, first time you're caught, second time again you're caught. So it means that this, this, by the time you reach here, you've been caught. So it means you cannot even get to here. So that one is off. Let's follow this branch. Again, from here, you come, they catch you the first time. The second time, you've not been caught. The third time, you've not been caught. So what does that mean? It means you came late the first time, they caught you. The second time, they didn't catch you. The third time, they didn't catch you. It means that this, by the, by the time you're here, it means you have, you have come late three times and you've not been dismissed. Why? Because out of the three times you have come late, they've only caught you once. And yet dismissal requires that they catch you two times. So we, we put a mark there. So we move on to the next. We have this one uh, again. First time they catch you. Second time they don't catch you. Then you come the third time, then they catch you. So in that in that uh, um, limb, in that one, you already see that they've they've caught you two times. So it means you've come late three times and they've already caught you. Ah, uh, it's game over. You'll be dismissed. So this branch will not work. So let's move on to the branches down here. The branches down. Uh, let's go on. First time you come, you're not caught. The second time, you're not. You let you're not caught. Then they catch you the third time. So you only see that here in this branch, they only caught you once, right? So it means you've come late three times, but you've not been dismissed because dismissal requires that they catch you two times. They've only caught you once. So this one will work. Then again. First time, we, we are now looking at another limb. First time, you're not caught. Second time, you're not caught. Third time, you're not caught. This one will also work. Okay, I'll put a... I'll mark it because it means that you came late. First time, they didn't catch you. Second time, they didn't catch you. Third time, you are still not caught. So it means that you were not dismissed. So we move on. Uh -huh. You arrive late the first time. They don't catch you. You're not caught. The second time, they catch you. And then you come here the third time, they catch you. It means that as far as this route is concerned, first time you, you, you're you not caught, but they catch you the second time, then the third time. It means by the time you reach here, because you've been caught two times, you're dismissed. We are interested in finding paths or branches where you're not dismissed. So this one won't work. So let's try the last one. First time, they you're not caught. Second time, they catch you. Third time, they don't catch you. So this one will also work. What does it mean? It simply means that you came late three times, but they only caught you once, so it means you've not yet been dismissed. So in other words, from our analysis of our tree, we've been able to identify this, that, this, and that. So they want the probability, find the probability that an employee who is late three times is not dismissed. So here we have probability that you're late three times, and not dismissed. So to get that probability, we are going to try out all the three scenarios. Okay? So the, the scenarios here that we are trying out, we have this. The first one is this. This one here. So we are just going to follow the limb from where it starts. This times that times that. This to reach there. Okay? So it's going to be a quarter okay times three quarters times three quarters so we shall come here and say it's a quarter times three quarters times three quarters plus we go to another limb there is this one 
So this one follows this times that times that. So it's three quarters. Multiply that by another three quarters. Multiply that by a quarter. Plus, we move on to the next. So the next again, we have this one here. So to reach here, we pass here, go there, go there. So it is three quarters times three quarters times three quarters. Okay, so that is plus. We go on. This is going to become three quarters. Multiply that by three quarters. Multiply that by three quarters. That's the third possibility. Then we have another one, which is this one. So to, in order for us to get to this possibility, it is three quarters, multiply that times a quarter, times that. So we shall come here and say it's going to be plus three quarters, multiply that by a quarter, multiply that by three quarters, like that. So we're going to go ahead and add up the probabilities. So here it is a quarter, multiply that by three quarters times that. That is going to give us nine over 64 plus, of course, this is also going to be uh, nine out of 64 plus, this is going to be um, 27 out of 64 plus, this is also going to be 9 out of 64. Of course, when we add up all these, the, the denominator is the same. So what do we remain with up? It is going to be 54. And of course, when we simplify this, it's going to be ending up with, you know, divide that by 2, that is going to be 27. Divide that by 32. So this is the probability. In other words, we've answered the question. So that's the probability of, as you can see, the probability of, uh, you know, we've used the probability tree to answer the, the question that, find the probability that an employee who is late three times is not dismissed. So it's as simple as that. We have finished with that one. Okay, those are quite free marks, don't you agree? Okay, moving on. We have here statistical data. Part B. Statistical data showed that 18.6% of the male students and 18.9% of the female students who completed their degree course at Macquarie University passed with second class upper in 2019. Okay, so they're telling us that if 250 male students were sampled, okay, if 220 male students were sampled, find the probability that more than 50 male graduates passed with the second class upper degree. More than 50 uh, graduates, you know, passed with a second class upper degree. So what's the probability of that? So I like to break down questions first. Um, sometimes we can have unnecessary data. Okay, so let's get slowly. Statistical data showed that 18.6% of male students, so let's call this male, okay? So we have male students. And then, um, so 18.6% of the male students. So it means that of these male students, only 18.6%, okay? It showed that 18.6% of the male students and 18.9% of female students, so meaning we have also female students, okay? And of these female students, only 18.9, okay? 18.9% of the female students who completed their degree course at Macquarie University. So these ones, uh, they completed the degree, okay? So it means that the, the encompassing thing is both this and that completed their degree. Of course, the people who completed their degree, they are male ones and then the female ones, okay? I, I'm just trying to to put the, the question in perspective here, okay? So 18, uh, those that completed, 18.9% um, of the female students who completed their degree course at Macquarie University passed with second class upper. So it means that 18% these ones passed. It means that there are some male who failed, okay? 
that we do not know about okay even these ones the female ones 18.9 percent these ones are the ones who passed that's what the question is saying it also means that there are those who failed of course for us to get the ones who failed this is 18.9 percent 100 percent minus 18.9 percent gives us those ones who failed here same thing here this 18.6 percent who passed those who failed is 100 percent minus this to get the answer but let's first finish with the question okay so who complete the da, 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 passed with second class upper in 2019 now they're telling us that if now after giving us all this information they're telling us that if 250 male students were sampled now the focus has come on the male now if they sampled 250 male okay if 250 male students were sampled find the probability that more than 50 male graduates passed so they want the probability the random variable in this case is okay the number of students of male students because they're telling us that 250 male student 250 male students were sampled so in other words we are analyzing only male students i even don't know why they gave us this that this data now because the question the, the the female students are not being talked about so i don't know they, they, maybe they just put it there to confuse people okay you know like how exams can be like they're telling us that if 250 male students were sampled find the probability that more than 50 male graduates passed with second class upper degree okay so um for starters here they're telling us that if 250 male students were sampled so it means that now we are concerned with the 250 200 and you know it's only male students that were sampled it means in other words it was a population and from that population only the males were sampled so 250 students were sampled and it is from that sample that we are trying to find the probability we are using that sample to calculate the probability that find the probability that more than 50 male graduates passed so it means that our random variable okay which we are going to call x our random variable what is it it is actually the male students that passed that is our random variable x now they're telling us that find the probability that more than 50 male graduates passed with the second class upper so it means our random variable which is x i am now by by random variable these are things that must have been introduced to you when you're doing statistics in class they introduce to you what a random variable is and they explain it to the detail so i'm just hinting on it here so our random variable here is x what's the probability that this random variable x is greater than 50. That's what they are saying. That find the probability that more than fifty male graduates passed with second class upper. So what's the probability that X is greater than fifty? So what this is the probability that we are trying to find. So um, if you look at this kind of data, um, you realize that it is about. We well, first of all, uh, this is out. It's only male students that were sampled. So this female part portion is now useless we are interested in this one and now if you look at this kind of data it is uh, the probability if you look at the nature of the probability it is it, it it only gives you two 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 outcomes okay in other words here um it's either someone passed okay or failed and these kinds of data that have these two distinct, uh, like peop specific outcomes, okay? The outcomes that are, it's either blue or black. In other words, it's either someone is a success or a failure. Probability of such, these are what we call, uh, the distributions that come out of these are what we are calling binomial, okay? Distributions. Again, this must have been introduced to you in class because there's a difference between binomial distributions and then uh, normal distributions. Normal distributions deal with continuous data mostly. De yeah, they, continue, they deal with continuous data. 
binomial distributions deal mostly with the kind of distributions that are discrete it's important that you have a firm foundation regarding those introductions you know what first of all what is a distribution then when you understand what a distribution actually means then you know what a normal distribution is and then what a binomial distribution is when you understanding those fundamental foundational definition helps you in reasoning these numbers when they come you're able to classify that this is a normal distribution this is a binomial distribution and it also helps you to in, to properly interpret what formulas these were things i assume by the time you're watching this video you attended class they introduced these things to you and now you're just here for revision right yeah okay so these are binomial distribution this is a binomial distribution so and we know that the characteristics of binomial distribution we always have uh, a value uh, we, we, we now now the value of n here are the number of observations and the number of observations here is there are 250 male students so it's 250 male students out of those 250 male students what's the probability that some they passed okay which we do not by p probability of success that is not passed okay the probability of success is normally denoted by p and here according to our question the probability that they passed is 18.6 percent if you are to convert that into um you know a decimal it's 18.6 divide that by 100 okay so it means that the, the, the value of p here is going to be 18.6 divided by 100 to remove this percentage side is going to give us 0 0.186 so that's the probability of success then the probability of failure that is the probability that these ones failed it's definitely we said like if out of the 250 male students they're telling us that 18.6 passed it means that the ones that failed were 100 percent minus this 18.6 percent to get the probability of failure which is q which is 0 0.814 okay or it's in other words we can simply say 1 minus 0 0.186 1 minus 0 0.186 gives us 0 0.814 okay so that's the, the this is a binomial distribution now we have the number of observations p and then q so now after doing that now we are required to find the probability that this value of x we our normal variable x is greater than 50 that's the question because the question says find the probability that more than 50 male graduates passed with second class upper degree what's the probability that that happened now this is x is greater than 50 okay now um remember that uh, when we come to uh, x being greater than 50 it means that uh, we this in other words we are beginning if it's greater than 50 it means our random variable is okay let me do an, an illustration here um it's like saying if this is uh 50 it means that we are starting from 51 52 53 and so on when we say x greater than 50 it means that uh the 50 is not part of the the, the 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 set if i may use it that way so we convert this because x is greater than 50 to get this x to be part of the set this is going to be converted into probability that x is greater than or equal to 51. remember when you are doing with binomial distributions these are discrete numbers so x is greater than 50 is converted to x is greater than or equal to 51 we push it one figure ahead okay and now after doing so now we are supposed to convert the, we are supposed to standardize this this is supposed to be equal to we want uh, this value of uh, this value of x greater than or equal to 51 we're supposed to standardize it in other words because the value of n is large okay this is a binomial distribution because the value of n is large in other words the value of n is greater than 20 
when the value of n is too large then we are going to approximate this to the in other words we are going to approximate the binomial distribution uh, to the normal in other words what we are trying to say is that when the values when the binomial distribution has so many observations or when the value of n is too large the distribution tends to look like a normal distribution and we know that a normal distribution has this bell shape yeah this thing here a bell shaped curve like that this is a normal distribution so we know that a normal distribution has the nature is such that the the figures here okay they are continuous now if the values in a binomial distribution because with binomial distribution we're dealing with discrete figures okay discrete discrete items now when these items become too many when they become too many then we approximate it to the normal distribution so this is what we are going to do here again these are foundational issues that i expect you were introduced to so we are going to approximate this to the, the binomial distribution we are going to uh, approximate it using the normal distribution so what we do is that uh, we try and do just that we are going to standardize this so how are we going to standardize that so we are going to standardize it using that formula that the standardization which is normally denoted by z is going to be equal to the value of x which is our random variable minus minus our mean which we denote by that divide that by the standard deviation which we denote by that uh, let's not get confused this mu is mean and this thing here is our standard deviation so that's what we're going to first do so we are going to first find the mean so what is the mean mean or let me put it in brackets here mean some of you do not get confused so for normal distribution our mean is given by the number of observation times the uh, successes so that's going to be equal to n which is 250 multiply that by the probability of success which is 0 0.186 and when we multiply those two what do we end up with we end up with 46.5 so 46.5 defines becomes our mean so what about our standard deviation so our standard deviation which is denoted by this let's call it standard deviation is going to be given by yes standard deviation is the square root of variance so it's going to be the square root of the variance variance is given by the n times the probability of success times the probability of failures which is going to be under the square root of n which is 250 multiply that by um, the probability of success or which is uh, n pq so in other words it is n times p which is 0 0.186 multiply that by q which is going to be 0 0.814 so what do we end up with here we shall end up with 6.1523 now you make sure that when the decimal points are too many in your answer you write them at least two four decimal places so that you preserve the accuracy of your final answer okay so after doing that then we shall come back to our standardization here so it means our value of z here is going to be equal to the value of x in the uh, our random variable in this case it's going to be you know now there is what we call the uh because now we are trying to approximate this thing to the binomial remember we converted it, this from this to that so to convert it to to you know approximating it to the binomial we have such a thing we call the continuity correction i'm just going to hint on it continuity correction i'm just going to hint on it i expect that by the time you are watching this this was explained fully when they were introducing this topic in in your lectures okay so the continuity correction here 
of course uh, briefly when uh, it is 51 when we are we're dealing with a minimum number of course here we are saying x is greater than or equal to 51 it means that uh, 51 becomes our minimum number and so for every minimum number we ma we subtract 0 0.5 okay then for every maximum number we add 0 0.5 uh, why do we add and subtract 0 0.5? Those we, th that is going to get us into a longer conversation. But it must have been introduced to you when they were introducing binomial distributions. So in this case, the continuity correction, it's going to be 51 minus 0 0.5. So 51 minus 0 0.5, okay? Let me write it here. 51 minus 0 0.5 is going to give us 50.5. This is our continuity. Uh, we, we, uh, this is what we get after applying our continuity correction. And so when we come back here to our value of z, which we said it is going to be going to x minus uh, mean, divide that by standard deviation. So what we are going to get here is going to be equal to, what is our value of x? Our value of x is 50.5 minus the mean. So what is our mean? We got it as 46.5 divide that by the standard deviation the standard deviation we got here is 6.1523 so what does that mean so that is going to give us our value of z the standardized figure our value of z is going to be 0 0.6501 like that so if that is our value of z so what does that mean it simply means that um, our thing here has become this. It simply means that our value of z, we say that our probability, we want the probability of x is greater than or, you know, equal to 51. Okay. So what has this become? This has become probability of z, which is going to be greater than or equal to our value of z here is 0 0.6501 so it is 0 0.6501 that is what that means so um now that we've gotten our value of z like that so we go ahead and find the probability of that of course now how does this look like this is how this looks like on our bell curve now we are approximating this on the, the binomial to the normal so this is how our bell curves looks like, like that. Let me draw it there like that. This is our normal curve. So it means that we have standardized it, you know, to this distribution, normal distribution. So it means that our value of Z is somewhere here. Our value of Z is 0 0.6501. So because this is our value of z, and here they are saying that z is supposed to be greater than or equal to 0 0.6501, so it means that greater than is in that direction, okay? Greater than or equal to z. In other words, z is the minimum, so greater than or equal to, we are looking at that, moving forward. So in other words, that is the region that we are interested in. That is what it means. So we are supposed to find the probability using the tables, the probability that is going to correspond to this value of z. Are we together? We are going to find the probability that corresponds to this value of z. But remember, the probabilities that we are getting that are corresponding to this value of z, those probabilities are being counted from the center here. In other words, they, they will be counting this part. So from 0 here up to this value of z, what we are going to go and read from the tables is going to be that it is going to be that area, that shaded area. But remember, our question is telling is interested in this thing that we've shaded black. So we'll, I'll, I'll show you how we'll be able to resolve it. So let's go to our table. We are looking point for, for the probability that is corresponding to 0 0.6501. So I'll go there. So as you can see, we have reached our table here, okay? So 6501, 
Now, I think you can also see that this thing is giving us a clue that whenever we are trying to find the probability, okay, when you're trying to find the probability of uh, a Z, are you seeing this Z here? You're seeing that this thing is painted black. It means that whatever we find our value of Z, all values of Z that are here, they are counted from here, from zero, moving to where the Z is. So when we are trying to find this probability, it is actually, as you can see, the P. That is the we, we are we are we we are look we are actually getting it's more like we are getting the area under the graph coming from zero up to that point where Z is. That is the, that is the figure the probability we are getting. So in this case, what we are looking for is our Z value is zero point six five zero one. That is the value of Z. So how do we get that? We are going to come and look for it up here. So we are going to find to go um look for first of all let's look for 0 0.6 now if you come here slowly our 0 0.6 is about there um 0 0.6 is here our 0 0.6 okay then of course if that is our 0 0.6 then we have five then uh, 0 0.6 is here then five our five is up here so it is 0 0.65, okay? So it means that this other thing has been catered for. Let me write it here, 0 0.6501. So our 0 0.6 here has been catered for, which is that one there. Then our 5 is up there. Now this 0, 1, now this is, uh, we are supposed to come this way and look for it, our 0 or 1. But when you look at the figures here, we are only adding 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9. So in other words, when you come up here, that 0, 1 is not catered for. So we ignore it. It is negligible. It's not catered for in our table. So we shall see, go with 0 0.65. So here it is 0 0.65. And when you look at those ones, 0 0.65, um, 0 0.65, when you come here, well, let's move slowly. 0 0.6 is right there and this is here so you find that the number in the intersection is right there so you're going to the, now all these numbers are 0 point something these numbers you're seeing here are 0 point something so in other words the probability of this that corresponds to 0 0.65 where the value of z is 0 0.6501 it is 0 0.2422 that is what it means. So we shall come and write it here. So it means that the probability here, it's going to be probability where uh, Z is, the, 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 the Z figure, this one, is it is actually corresponding to 0 0.2422. Now this 0 0.2422 that we have gotten as our probability, in actual sense, it is what is corresponding to this green area, okay? This green area in other words it's more like saying the area under this green area from this zero up to where the z is the area under that green area is actually 0 0.2422 that is what that the, that thing means but remember in our bell shape we are interested in the area that is shaded black because they want where z is greater than this okay so it means that we were interested in that. So it means for us to find the probability uh, where the black thing is shaded, we are going to have to subtract it by 0 0.5. So how is that done? It means you are going to come here, down here and say uh, the probability probability that uh, this Z is greater than um you know or equal to 0 0.6501 okay is going to be equal to now this is going to be 0 0.5 minus because when you look at this bell shape half of it is 0 0.5 the probability is 0 0.5 and the other half is 0 0.5 so if we want to get this remaining part it's going to be this whole half, which is 0 0.5, minus the probability we got from our table, which is 0 0.2444, so that we are able to get the remaining part. So in other words, it's going to be 0 0.5 minus 0 0.2422.
And so what do we have here? 0 0.5 minus 0 0.24 double 2. We are going to end up with 0 0.2578. And now that's the answer. It's the probability that our male students are more than 50. As simple as that. Now, I am cognizant. Now, when I'm doing most of these numbers here, for example, this one here, I am aware that there are some people that are looking at these things for the very first time. And uh, there is a lot of background information, foundational information that you need to acquaint yourself with to understand what I am doing. In other words, to understand why I am talking about the 0 0.5. For example, here, as you can see, you need to know how I even started shedding this thing like that the way I did. Again, I am saying these are just revision uh, videos. In future, I intend to record videos that are topical based where I will introduce these things from scratch so that you're able to know about the derivations of the shadings that I am doing here uh, so that you're able to know why this is 0 0.5 this way, 0 0.5 that way. I know some of you are looking at these things for the first time and they are daunting. But it is, it is nice that uh, you should first be introduced to these concepts before you actually start doing these numbers. Most people who find probability hard, it is because they did not have the opportunity to be introduced certain concepts to. So this is the answer. And uh, we are going to move on to the next number. Um, if you've not understood this explanation, uh, you've got lost somewhere along the way, you let me know in the comment section below. And I can assure you, I think the remedy for you, if you've not understood, is uh, you have to, to, to watch where I explain these things topic by topic. That is when I will have the time to, 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 to introduce everything gradually so that everything makes sense. Because in this number, for example, there's a lot of application of so many concepts in just one simple thing. You must have known. For those of you that did mathematics at a level, these things are already a walkover because you are introduced these things too. For those of you that were doing other things, then you just ended up doing the accounting course and you're doing the CPA paper and you're being required to do these things. They could be a headache, but I promise you that if you're watching these things and uh, if, if, if you just get someone to introduce these things to you, they are really easy. So I will leave that number at that. We have gotten that answer. So the probability is actually this 0 0.2578. That's the answer. Okay, so we are moving on to the last one, which is a number regarding rank correlation coefficient. So it's, it goes. It says that a researcher was interested in determining the performance of small businesses in Kampala suburbs. He collected data on daily sales and profit from a sample kiosk from each of the suburbs as summarized in the table below. So this is the table, okay? Aha, uh -huh. so required, use Spearman's rank correlation coefficient method to determine the coefficient of correlation between the sales and the profit. Okay, then after Roman 2, they're asking us to comment on the relationship between the sales and the profit. This looks pretty straightforward, okay? Spearman's rank correlation coefficient. Now, uh, now for uh, the, this one also, let me just quote the formula here. Spearman's rank correlation coefficient um, is given by uh, Spearman's rank correlation coefficient is going to be given by one minus, you know, six times the summation of the difference squared, divide that by n into n squared minus one. That's the formula. Uh, now, these formulas are definitely normally given in the booklet, in the formula booklet when you're in, in the exam. But it's, it's also nice to be able to memorize it, okay? So the value of n are the number of observations. So let's get to it. The number of observations, what, how many are they here? We have 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10. So the number of observations here are 10. So it means our value of n here is 10. Then also, 
in this formula what we need to deal with is also the d now the d here the value of d here is the differences in rank the d squared d is the difference in rank d is more like rank difference okay so now whatever we are going to draw here we are actually trying to find the value of d we shall come find the value of d plug it in there and then the rest is a walkover so how do we get the value of d we're supposed to get the rank for sales okay we also get the rank for the profits because this is it the thing is we want the, we want to determine the coefficient or the correlation between sales and profit so it is the sales we get the ranks for sales, the ranks for profit, we subtract those ranks, and then after subtracting those ranks, then uh, we are able to find the value of D. Now, take note that, how do we get these ranks? I think I'm going to just build on this table uh, to, to, to save time. I'm just going to extend this table. Of course, in the exam, you're having your separate answer sheets, and definitely uh, you should... Uh, draw this afresh of course you draw it very fast to save time you draw the table but i'm going to take advantage of this and just going to extend this table and uh, add a few more columns our goal here is to find the ranks okay so that is what i'm doing like that this and then that and then this yeah i think that's it so remember here we are interested in getting our value of d then we square it because remember in our formula down here if you are to look at it we are interested we need to get this value d squared and uh, this is what we are this is the journey we are taking here so we are going to need to find here with the cells we are going to find the rank for sales let me denote it like that the rank for sales then here we have the rank for profits i'm going to call it here rank for profit like that then of course we are going to get our value of d here our value of d here is going to be the rank for sales minus the rank for profit then after getting our value of d which is the difference in the ranks then we shall do we get our value of d squared and of course after getting our value of d squared in this column then down here we shall get the summation of d squared here and then when we get the summation of the d squared down there we shall come and substitute it there we have our value of n and then we are able to get our rank correlation as the answer okay so let's get started with our calculations of course with these kinds of numbers we have to be we have to be careful it is very easy to to mess up to, 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 to make an error okay so we are going to begin what is our ranking now when we are look, we are going to look at the sales column now we can choose these rankings either we can rank these numbers by beginning from the biggest to the smallest or we can begin from the smallest to the biggest either whatever order you choose you will be able to get the same answer so if you're saying that you're going to use your ranking you're going to follow from the smallest to the biggest make sure that that is the order you follow smallest to the biggest for the rank for sales smallest to the biggest for the rank for profit if you decide to do it the other way around and you say you're going to rank your make your rankings from the biggest to the smallest make sure that it is uniform both for the the two parameters for if from smallest to biggest make sure it is the same do not say you're going to come and rank sales from smallest to biggest then you rank profit from biggest to smallest that will be a contradiction and you will end up getting wrong answers so what do we choose here um let me begin with uh, you know from the let me begin from the biggest to the smallest okay let me choose that the biggest to the smallest so i'm going to come to the sales of course um as you can see here so i'll come through here and look which one is the biggest it is this one so this is rank number one it's the biggest that is 546 then um moving on to the next one we have 400 
so which one is the second biggest here we have 487 we have 484 we have 485 no i think before we go to the 400s we still have 500 here this is the second okay then we move on to the third the third biggest here is 487 that's the third biggest then the fourth i think from the 400s we have 485 here is the fourth then we have 484 here which is the fifth right there then we move on uh, of course the ones that i fin i finish let me mark them here okay then uh let's look for the next after 400 let's look for the 300s the 300s which one is the biggest this one is the sixth it's the big uh, the next then we have the seventh that's 396 that's 317 here that is the seventh right there then we have the eighth where is the eighth um 264 here this is done 264 is the eighth then we have the ninth which is 236 then the tenth so here we have ranked from the biggest to the smallest okay so we're going to do the same for the rankings for profit which ones which are these ones we finish these ones okay so the ones for profit again we look for which one is the biggest from here it's this one it's the biggest let me put a dot here that is the first the ranking so after the 100 which one is next uh, the next one i think is this one here of eighty-four thousand. okay this is the second right then we have the third from 84 do we have any 80s no do we have 70s right 78 here is the third then we have the fourth um let's go after of course this one is done then where is the fourth from 78 we have do you have any other 70s no we have 60s yeah we have 65,000 here yeah we actually now there's this thing here we have 65,000 and 65,000 so now we are having two numbers that are carrying the same remember we are ranking we have the first rank one two three the third so now we have two numbers that are in there that are the same we have 65,000 up here 65,000 here so now it means that either in any of them can either be the fourth and the fifth they are they are two because they are two it's the fourth and the fifth so how do we handle that we are going to come here so the fourth position and the fifth position position are having the same number so we add them and divide by how many are they there are two so there are two so it's going to be five plus four which is going to be nine out of two which is going to give us 4.5 so because it has given us 4.5 so that 4.5 is going to be share it is going to be for these things that look the same so it means that we have the first the second the third then this one is 4.5 then up here is also 4.5 that's how we treat it now let's assume uh it l l let me create another scenario here okay let us uh, assume that there were three numbers that we are having the same the same uh, th the, 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 the same the, the rank let's say the fourth number plus the fifth number plus the sixth number they all had the same rank like they, they are all having the, the same number the, these ranks the the fourth rank the fifth rank the sixth rank like there are three numbers here that are looking the same again we are going to add them and divide them by how many are they they are one two three ranks that's how we do it so this would be 11 15 so it would be 15 over 3 which is 5 and so it means that we would come and put 5 5 5 in all the three that the, this is just a scenario i have created okay so let's move on with our number so it means that here the rank here we have created the rank for the first the second the third the fourth and fifth ranks have been sh have been shared out so now we are looking for the sixth one this one is done sixty-five thousand. this one is also done uh-huh so we are looking for the sixth one the sixth one is this one here 57 sixth one so it's the seventh from 50s we get to 40s there are no 40s we get to 30s i think this is the seventh right here um 
no from 57 we have 50 this is the seventh right there it's there then we have the eighth where is the eighth the eighth is right here then where is the ninth right there and then we have the tenth again here me i used from uh, biggest to smallest but you can also use from smallest to biggest and you should be able to get the same answer so the, we, now the rest is just arithmetic we start subtracting this minus that 1 minus 4.5 is 3.5 and the 3.5 is a negative 3 minus 1 is 2 10 minus 10 is 0 this is also 0 8 minus 9 is negative 1 9 minus 8 is negative 1 6 minus 3 is 3 2 minus 2 is 0 5 minus 6 is negative 1 4 minus that is negative 0 0.5 so we start uh, 3.5 squared that is now the d squared is going to give us 12.25 this is going to give us 2 squared is 4 this is 0 this is 0 this is 1 this is 1 I hope you know what we are doing we're just squaring this one d squared 3 squared is 9 then this is definitely 0 this is also 1 then this squared is 0 0.25 and when we add up all these ones we are able to end up with the summation of d as 28.5 28.5 is our summation for d squared so now that we have gotten our 28.5 then we shall come and you know substitute here we shall simply come here and say this is going to become 1 minus 6 summation of d squared what is summation of d squared is this 28.5 so it's going to be 6 times 28.5 over that is our value of n is 10 into n squared which is 10 squared minus 1 like that so that's how it's going to become and so what do we have here so it's going to become 1 minus now whatever is inside that bracket is going to give us 171 divide that by 990 and what do we end up with we end up with 0 0.8273 so 0 0.8273 becomes our rank correlation coefficient our spearman's rank correlation coefficient so we've finished roman one now they're asking us comment on the relationship between the sales and the profits now of course our comment on the relationship between the sales and the profit is going to depend on you know the rank correlation where does it fall now unfortunately um, in our formula booklet these categorizations are not there so you're going to have to memorize them they are not so complicated to memorize let me write it down here for some of you when we are doing the chart we are going to follow when we are trying to find comment on the rank correlation coefficient we begin from 0 to 0 0.29 okay then we we come to 0 0.3 to 0 0.49 then we go to 0 0.5 to 0 0.69 are you seeing that it's easy to remember 0 0.7 to Zero. Now, when it comes to 7, 0 0.79, then we have 0 0.8 up to 1.0. This is how it is. So here, it's going to be very low. If, it's, if your answer lies here, it's going to be very low. Relationship, okay. Or we'll call it very weak. Here it is just a low relationship or weak. Here, when it is there, you just it's fair or moderate. Here the relationship is high. Here the relationship is very high. So from that, if you look at your answer, where does it fall? You're going to realize that your answer 0 0.8273 is falling in this bracket. So what does that mean? 
When they said, tell us, comment on the relationship between the sales and profits, so to comment on this, you will come and conclude by saying that the relationship between sales and profit is very high. That is what it means. So that is your one mark um, in that question here, up here. And they say comment on the relationship between sales and profits. So because it is from the rank correlation that you're able to determine the, um, the comment. So the relationship is very high. You can say that the sales and pro the, the data between sales and the profit, their correlation is very high, or it has a very high correlation coefficient. Yeah. So again, it's important that this is memorized. They never, uh, it, it's rare that they'll give you this. So that's it. We have answered all our three questions. And this brings us to the end of this session. Feel free to let me know in the comment section below about, you know, your feedback. My name is Arnold Kisembo. And thank you for watching. I'll catch you in the next session. Take care. Thank <laughs> you.